XYZ plot is a script within Stable Diffusion that allows you to test different variables and generate comparison images based on those variables. For example, you can generate a set of comparison images using different seeds, swapping out prompts, or even changing your CFG scale. I'll be going over the user interface, leaving out the individual list of values for a separate video, as there would be a lot to cover. But a quick shout out to the supporters over on Patreon, like the video, and give it to me bite-sized. The X type, Y type, and Z type input boxes is where you select the type of test you want to run and the value associated with that test in the corresponding values box. For example, let's do a simple test on the X value where we can test what our image would look like using the seeds one to three. We can see we get three images demonstrating what using that seed would have given you. Now let's add in the Y axis and test our CFG scale using values eight to 10. We can see how this new information is added to the matrix layout, showing us the combined impact of the seed and the CFG scales on our generated images. Then we can use the Z axis to add in our steps, and this will give us the combined impacts of the seed, CFG scale, and steps in our images in the matrix style layout. This is a handy way of checking the outputs of each type of tested variable, so you can figure out what will work for you. It's also worth keeping in mind that the layout of the plot will always have the X value going horizontal, the Y value going vertical, and the Z value right at the top, going vertical and sitting right above the affected areas. The draw legend option creates text on the generated matrix that indicates the value of a particular image. For example, in this image with the legend enabled, we can see which seed is associated with which image, but without the legend, we don't have that information readily available. Keep minus one for seeds will ensure that all generated images use a random seed beyond the first generated image. This is because by default, generating an image with a seed of minus one will use that same random seed for all generated images. Keep minus one for seeds bypasses this to ensure that a fresh random seed is used for each generated image. Include sub images will take the generated photos from the XYZ plot and allow you to view them individually within the stable diffusion preview window. With this option turned off, you can only view the entire XYZ plot in the preview window and will have to navigate to the corresponding folder to view the individually saved images. Include subgrids will take the generated grids from the XYZ plot and allow you to view them individually within stable diffusion's preview window. With this option turned off, you can only view the entire XYZ plot in the preview window and you will have to navigate to the corresponding folder to view the individual grids which make up the entire plot. The grid margin slider allows you to specify how many pixels apart the images are on the grid. This is useful if you don't want the images to be closely hugging each other and you want an easier visual distinction between where each image starts and ends. Using any of the swap axis buttons will swap the position of the type and values with the corresponding axis. And this is a useful way to move values up or down without having to manually copy and paste them. I also wanted to cover input values as the value boxes can take different types of information from text to numbers, Boolean values, and even listed options. The input value a type will accept will always be the same as what the corresponding option will accept but let's look at the different types of options. Some values use text to determine the type of information which should be tested. And these are often separated with a comma to show where each test begins and ends. In the event, a comma form part of the string of text you are testing, then you can use quotations without spaces to include commas as part of the prompt. There are some types which will need numerical values to function correctly. And these numbers can either be integers, floats, or a combination of both, depending on whether the thing you are testing can take those values. For example, if you're testing the seed, then you will need to use an integer, which is a whole number. And if you're testing the CFG scale, then floats or numbers with decimals will work. Simple range is used to test a series of values within a range, such as 30 to 35. This is formatted by using a dash between the two values. And as we can see, we get a series of images based on those numerical values. Divided range is where you can take a range of values and divide them by a number you specify to test the numbers which form part of the division. For example, if I were to use a range of two to six and divide that by three, 
we will test the values 2, 3 and 6. Increment and decrement is where you specify a range of numbers and then either increase or decrease through the list of numbers based on the value of your choice. So for example, you could use the range of 1 to 10 and use plus 1 in parenthesis to test all 10 of those values. If you use plus 2, then it would only test 5 of those values as you're testing every 2 numbers instead of 1. It's the same concept for when you're using a minus, except you will want to format your range from large to small. If you don't format your numbers correctly, then the test may end prematurely, such as if you try to test 10 to 1, but use the plus 1 in parenthesis, which will take you to number 11, which is outside of our specified range. Comma dividing numbers means specifying the individual values you want to test, and this works with both numbers and ranges. So for example, you could run a test on seed using the values 69, 420 and 69, 420 to test those seeds, but you could also do 1 to 3 plus 1, comma, 7 to 9 plus 1, which will test the values 1 to 3, then 7 to 9, skipping everything in between. There are some variables with XYZ plot which have predetermined values and these are indicated by a drop down option and a yellow book. Clicking the drop down will show you a list of pre-selected values and clicking the yellow book will copy all of the values into a field so you can remove the ones you don't need. Some functions use a boolean value which simply means true or false and applies to options that use checkboxes. The input type for these values is true or false but you can also use yes and no, the letter Y or N, and the numbers 1 and 2. But to wrap things up, that covers the basics of how to use XYZ plot, and I'll upload a cheat sheet to the website once I finish the blog post for this video. Do consider supporting over on Patreon, and thanks for 2000 plus subscribers. This is Bite Size Genius, and I hope you enjoyed.